family family my name is samantha grimes and you're watching samantha grimes tv a place dedicated to the total woman. all right family do me a huge favor if you like natural hair care content motivational content lifestyle content and just everything dedicated to your inward spiritual health as well as your outward spiritual health then go ahead and hit that subscribe button below and if you've already done that then hit the notification bell so that you do not miss any future uploads. All right, family, so I am so excited to be back with you guys. I haven't made a video in about two weeks. I've been a little bit busy, but I am back here with you. And before I get into the introduction of today's topic and what we're gonna get into, I felt the desire to kind of reintroduce myself to you guys a little bit, um, simply because um, many of you have been following me on this YouTube channel forever. And so you kind of already peaked this information, but some of you are newbies. And since you are newbies, I wanna say welcome please hit the like button, the comment button, and the subscribe button so that you do not miss any content uh, from me, as well as I wanna introduce to you uh, my business and, and who I am and just a little bit about me. My name is uh, Samantha Grimes, as you've already seen in the title, and I am a professional life strategist as well as content creator. So what does that mean? I own my own private practice right here in the Huntsville, Alabama area, where I do uh, life coaching sessions as well as faith-based counseling sessions. Yes, and as well as I do content creating for natural hair care brands, um, as well as for you guys right here on YouTube. I also have online courses. I have a membership group that helps me mentor women um, and, and just other things that I plan to do in the future as my business grows and expands. But holistically, my company is dedicated, as you've heard in the intro, to the total woman so all the different areas from your life to your career to your business to uh your inner healing as well as your outward hair any uh your inner healing as well as your outward healing and just everything you need for your total uh betterment uh, that is what my business is dedicated to that is what i am dedicated to so listen I have been in business for about three to four years now consistently. Thank you, Jesus. I launched my company in 2019 and I have been running ever since. Um, I had a baby and she's about four, about to be three, she's three, about to be four. And I am currently pregnant with our second child. Thank you, Jesus, um, for blessing us um, with another child. And by the, by the grace of God, I have been consistently without quitting in business. I have not gone out of business. I have not struggled for business. Um, God has really been fruitful and, and, and just blessed me and our family just so much, you know. And so I thought it'd be a really good time to share with you guys just some, uh, some tips on an entrepreneurship journey. All right, entrepreneurship. As you guys can see from the title, that's what we're going to talk about today, surviving entrepreneurship. And let me, I don't want you feel fooled. Just because I've had fruit and a, and a level of success does not mean that everything has come easy for me. It does not mean that I, don't, I do not have to work hard. It, 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 I'm just, child, it don't mean none of that, okay? Um, like I said, you know, entrepreneurship is powerful. It was introduced to me in college. And um, I had no, in well, I always had an interest in owning something, but I just, I didn't know that I was really going to do that with my life. Um, and so it was introduced to me in college by the head of my department. And I really learned the value of ownership and the value of owning your own company and being able to give people jobs and give people opportunity and give back to the community and, and just really uh, make a difference, you know. Um, but... I think entrepreneurship is also very glamorized right now. And so, so many people are competing. They feel sometimes a little jealous of somebody else's business. They're trying to, people out here stealing ideas. I mean, all kinds of stuff is happening out here in the name of surviving the entrepreneurship business game. And, and let's be real, most people don't have an MBA, okay? Even people who do have MBAs are struggling a little bit when it comes to it because it's it's a learning journey. It's not a, I came in, I killed it, and I've been killing it ever since. No, it's I came in and I'm gonna just work faithfully as unto the Lord. And so I wanna give you some real tips. Now, I don't wanna just sit here and talk to you about strategy. 
I don't want to sit here and talk to you about scheduling. I don't want to talk to you about your books or your money or all of that. You have plenty of videos on that. And if you want to see something like that, I can definitely uh, create that for you. But I want to give you some talk that's going to truly help you survive if you believe that you are called to business. Okay, I really want to help you out. Because there were some real conversations that me and the Holy Spirit had before I officially launched. So there was a lot of things that did not take me by surprise, that did not knock me off my game, that did not shake me. Not because I'm perfect, but I allowed the Spirit of God to prepare me. OK, and many of you have gone out and launched based upon something that you've seen or based upon a passion or based, based upon whatever. But sometimes there's some real inward conversations you got to have if you think you're going to make it. OK, and so I want to give you a few tips that I know will help you not only survive, but thrive in business. So let's get started. Tip number one, you can't be afraid to fail. I'm going to say it again. You cannot be afraid to fail because you will. Like I told you, one of the first conversations me and the father ever shared when he released that he wanted me to do this was that you can't go into this afraid of what if somebody doesn't buy my product? What if somebody doesn't like my service? That's going to happen. Like, I want to give you the honesty that maybe nobody else has given you. That's going to happen. You could be the best at whatever you do in the world. And there are going to be people who do not like it and prefer somebody else. There are going to be people, you know, the time and the effort and, 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 and the intentionality you put in this product. And there are going to be people who simply just do not want to buy it. They do not think it is that good. And if you are ready to quit, break down, cry question your whole life's purpose every time somebody doesn't want to work with you every time somebody doesn't want to do something every time somebody that doesn't have a compliment for your business or doesn't have a compliment for your service or doesn't like your product or it's not making the money you 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 you, you can't move forward some of the greatest Fortune 500 companies in the world experience levels of re rejection that you can't imagine and so, so many people feel so defeated and say, why is it working for them? And now we're, no, 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 you just haven't seen their failures. Nobody, nobody posts their failures. Nobody posts, you guys, this month, I didn't make half the revenue I made last month. Nobody posts that. Nobody talks about that, right? Nobody talks about how I had to go through uh, the process of relaunching this product so many different times because it was not getting the attention. I, I wasn't marketing it well enough. And somebody told me they were going to help me market and they, and they robbed me. And, you know, whatever could possibly happen. Like, nobody, nobody posts that kind of thing. You're going to fail a lot. There are going to be people who literally, y'all, I, I, I don't want to sit here and tell you, I, I've had plenty of positive testimonies of people who love my service, love my company, ain't never leaving me. And guess what? I done got emails from people who feel like you are not the one for me and, and, and feel like there's somebody better. And guess what? I bless them. <laughs> Listen, look at me. I bless them. And if they want to come back, I'm right here, ready to serve them. Because I'm not afraid of somebody not wanting to work with me. I'm not, I can't question the word of the Lord based upon how people act. And a lot of times, that's how the enemy is trying to get you to quit your business. That's how the enemy is trying to get you to stop moving and stop not believing and stop that momentum. He'll send some people and, and, and they're not saying what you want them to say. And, oh, you're not getting the likes on social media or, or your business structure is not as clean as this other person who seems all glamorous. And I'll oh, see, so you need to go ahead and quit. That's not God. Listen, if don't nobody else believe in you, God and you have to believe in you. We look at all these household names. They, they have great companies, make trillions of dollars. And guess what? Everybody thought it was stupid in the beginning. But you know what matters? They didn't think it was stupid. And so what's going to matter for you is that you don't think it's stupid. So first tip, surrender the fear of failure. Seemingly on the counter opposite, tip number two, surrender the fear of success. Yes, 
Surrender the fear of success. Ladies and gentlemen, because I know there's some men watching. Ladies and gentlemen, understand your focus on growing your business is not contingent upon what you can do. Your success is not contingent upon what you can do. Because without Christ, you can't do nothing. Without Christ, you, you're probably not the best. Without Christ, you probably don't have enough. That's just, that's, that's, that's real talk for you. That's it. But the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Which means if the success law gets too great, then Holy Spirit is waiting for you to come into his arms as a good, good father and give you the strategy you need for the realm that he is pushing you into. God is going to be there and catch you when you fail. And he's going to be there. He's going to catch you when you win. You cannot be afraid of you not being able to meet the demand. In your own strength and in your own power. No, you can't. But man, listen. When the, listen uh, true story, y'all. When the pandemic hit, that's the first time I stopped working in my office. And I had to start working from my house. Mind you, our toddler was out of daycare. <laughs> so she is at home with me and I'm going to figure out what to do with her while I'm taking these clients and I'm answering these emails and I'm trying to have meetings with these people and all this stuff. And I remember not only did my business not fall off, it progressed because so many people were grateful that I had the virtual option. They love the fact that, man, I don't feel safe going to anybody's office, but I can still have my sessions. And so the demand got higher. And in the midst of the demand, the Lord gave me witty ideas, inventions, gave me the grace to be in, uh, uh, ingenuitive in that moment and to really create other programs. That's, that really was the heart of the beginning of my mentorship program because you can, you can help a lot of people at one time. You know what I mean? Um, scheduling my sessions a particular way. Um, so many mothers mothers who had their kids at home because they're they they were fur furloughed for a little while so i'm having sessions with you and, and your baby in the camera and they're grateful that I, I i understand that because i got a child of my own you know and so we understand god is prepared to help you meet the demand do not worry about how much money you got do not you know what i'm saying like like you're not going to have everything perfect before you get there let that go. You're not. Entrepreneurship is not about who has the most perfect business. No, who is the most faithful? Who is the most consistent? Who trusts God? That's what this is about. Tip number three. Take your eyes off your competitors. Again, take your eyes off your competitors. Take your eyes. I'll go a further step. Take your eyes off of other people. If you can't watch them and learn from them, if you if you have if you watch them and you feel something coming in your heart, then maybe that shouldn't be there. Then maybe you just can't watch them for a little bit. OK, you, you got to know where you are and what you can handle. But take your eyes off all this people, all, the, all these people. So many people cannot enjoy their own level of success the, the the steps that you're making because you're too busy looking at somebody else's you keep comparing a two-year thing to a 20-year thing you keep comparing what what you have going on and what you have the capacity to do with somebody else's situation and what they got going on like and 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 it makes you almost regret where you are and there's somebody else wishing they were where you are. Listen, you know how many people have stopped businesses because somebody stole their idea? Welcome to business. People steal. I'm not saying don't take legal measures and 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 get things trademarked and, and reserve names and 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 do all the you know get a good lawyer and and make sure you your contract is written in and have all the fine print. We're not having that conversation. What we what we are talking about though when it comes to business is we're understanding that you can't stop moving because somebody stole your idea. People steal. It doesn't matter how many things that people try to do just like you they can't be you 
And what God has for you is for you. Whatever open door God has for you, that's it. That's it. The world bites and wrestles and rips each other's clothes off and how to get there quicker and have more success faster and, and overcompensate. As kingdom people, we don't have to do that. Daddy has enough for all of us. That's the truth. He does. Stop worrying about what somebody else is doing. Listen, there's going to be stuff that's literally popped up on your timeline. Somebody literally called you to tell you this just to discourage you. And you have to let whatever they're doing be none of your business. Listen, my first year, child, I wasn't even charging for stuff yet. <laughs> I wasn't. And somebody, and I, they're going to remain nameless, not only copied my idea, but rushed it. And I had a choice to make. Am I going to fall apart because somebody stole an idea that I had? Or am I going to continue to do what God told me to do? I continued to do what God told me to do. And it was 10 times more fruitful and more successful than I thought it was going to be. You got to learn to let what other people got going on go. Let what other people have going on go. At the end of the day, who cares? God is going to cover your business. God's going to take care of you. Yes, be aware of your competitors. But don't, don't study them. Don't worship them. Don't, don't get so caught up in what they're doing that you've forgotten what God's told you to do. You're going to have to be prepared to let that go. And my last point is remember why you're doing this. And this is a hard truth. So many people go into business only for the money. And I'm not throwing shade at that or discounting anybody. But the problem that can lie beneath that is that when it's only about the money, you'll do anything. You'll hurt anybody. You'll manipulate anybody. You'll, you'll, you'll do anything for the money. When there's no passion and love for your work, it can become a very ugly thing. And I believe as believers, you know, God gives us with passion and with purpose and with destiny, but I also believe he has called us to be good stewards, which means it is our responsibility to steward that passion and that hunger. Can I be honest with you? Loving women, helping women is something that I love. I've done it longer than maybe I was old enough to be doing it, okay? <laughs> and it's a passion of mine. And I am blessed enough to where my passion is also a part of my paycheck. And it is my responsibility to steward that love because business is something that has to be built. So many people want to hurry up and, and, and be rich. There's this reel that's going around and it's so funny. They have the Moesha music in the background saying, I've been working for one hour straight and I'm still not a millionaire, <laughs> like complaining. But that's all times how it looks and how it feels because it's like, man, you want the financial fruit of the thing that you love, that you know you're gifted at, you know you're anointed at. A lot of people, nobody tells you this, but with entrepreneurship, it's years of building which means you're not making the money that you could be making maybe year one as compared to year five. You know what I mean? Some people's success is quicker than others, but either way, it can't be about the money. It can't just be about the fact that you want to quit your nine to five. That doesn't mean you're called to business. Sometimes you need to go to a better nine to five. Like you gotta, you gotta know if I'm anointed for this, then I have the strength and the ability to sustain. I'm saying all that to say, fall in love again. Fall in love a lot. If you feel yourself falling in love, go watch that person that makes you say, man, I can't, I love doing this. Thank you, God. Go, go, go get back in the presence of God and ask him to reignite that fire on the inside of you. Listen to podcasts and teachings and constantly read books. Stay in a posture of passion because it is your passion and your purpose and the presence of God that's going to drive you, not the money. Some of the people that, some people that I follow, they're millionaires. Like 
but I mean like more than $1 million. Like they have millions and they barely talk about money, but they talk so much about the thing that they love to do. There are coaches I follow. Man, I don't even know how much money they got. I know they got a lot though. I, it's, I, you could tell, but they're so into the help and the advice and the poor that they have for people. You get to have that too. Let go. I got started because I loved it. So I was not over here biting my nails. Lord, when am I going to make my first? So when I finally started to make money, it was like, oh, it was almost a surprise because I was so caught up in the love of the work and the strategy of helping people and creating from that place that I was like, oh my goodness, this is now yielding fruit. Fall in love again. All right, family, family, thank you so much for watching. Do me a favor, like, 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 like this video, as well as hit the like button, the comment button, and the subscribe button. Listen, family, if you would like to book a session with me one-on-one, -on -one, visit my website at www.sgls.info, as well as if you would like to see me talk about something very specific on this channel that you see is within my niche, or it may not be in my niche, but I might be open to it, then do me a favor and write it in the comment section below, as well as you can write me on social media. If you are interested in following me on social media or just becoming a part of any type of community, that I am uh, that I have to offer <laughs> then uh, do me a favor and uh, follow the pages that are on the clip right behind this I love you guys <laughs>